Welcome once again to Jewish Awareness Ministries School of Biblical and Jewish Studies. Lesson two will continue our quest on Hanukkah and Christmas, shining light on December 25th. Is it the birth date of Jesus? There are many common factors in the holiday of Hanukkah and the holiday of Christmas. These holidays are tied together more than most understand. And if there was not a Hanukkah, there would never have been a Christmas. Most believers don't uh, understand this, have never considered this tie-in. But Hanukkah was uh, a very important time in the history of the nation of Israel. And if it never would have taken place, the events around uh, that first Hanukkah, if you will, uh, we would never have had a Christmas and the birth of Jesus. So it's very important. Here are some of the commonalities that we have. Uh, Hanukkah and Christmas originated in the same land, Israel. They are celebrated on the same day. Hanukkah is celebrated on the Jewish calendar month of Kislev on the 25th of that month. Christmas is celebrated in December, on the 25th of December. Both of the holidays remember or focus on a savior. For Hanukkah, it was Judah the Maccabean, the Hasmonean. And for Christmas, the savior is Jesus, who came into the world to die for the sins of the world. In both of these holidays, Light is a major theme. With Hanukkah, you have the menorah or the Hanukkah. It's a nine-branched candelabra, and we will consider that in much greater detail in our next lesson. But in Christmas, you have all kinds of lighting decorations. Also, in both of these holidays, gifts are given. In Hanukkah, Gifts are given over eight days. It's an eight-day celebration, an eight-day holiday. And generally speaking, on the first night, the child will get the least desired, the least expensive gift, and it will increase in desirability uh, and in value up until the final night when that child will get what he has really been hoping to get. Uh, generally works like that. Uh, so over an eight-day period, gifts are given. But for Christmas, it's one day, but gifts are shared. And then the shamus, the servant, is prominent in both Hanukkah and Christmas. Shamus means servant, and uh, we will again look at that the next lesson. But Jesus is the servant of God and is prominent. And then finally, songs are sung in both of these holidays. Uh, Rock of Ages, not the Christian version, but is sung uh, in the Jewish world. And for Christmas, there are all kinds of different Christmas carols. So there's lots of common themes that we find. And we'll find that there's a much more common theme as we uh, develop this understanding uh, about December 25th. Is it the birth date of Jesus? Hanukkah is not in the Old Testament. It's not mentioned in the Old Testament as the events of Hanukkah took place in the so-called 400 silent years. That's be, uh, at the end of the close of the Old Testament canon and the beginning of the New Testament canon. Now, although the events of Hanukkah are not mentioned in the Old Testament because the canon was closed by the time those events happened, uh, the book of Daniel mentions those events as a prophecy. In Daniel chapter 8, it says this, verses 1 and 2. In the third year of the reign of King Belshazzar, a vision appeared unto me, even unto me, Daniel, after that which appeared unto me at the first. And I saw a vision, and it came to pass when I saw that I was at Shushan in the palace, which is in the province of Elam. And I saw a vision, and I was by the river of Ule. Daniel gets a vision, and the vision that he's going to get uh, part of it, certainly, is speaking of the events of Hanukkah, 
that are still uh, a few hundred years down the road from when Daniel is writing, when he gets this prophecy. In verse 3 of Daniel 8, Then I lifted up mine eyes, and saw, and behold, there stood before the river a ram which had two horns, and the two horns were high, but one was higher than the other, and the higher came up last. Verse 4 tells us, I saw the ram pushing westward and northward and southward, so that no beast might stand before him. Neither was there any that could deliver out of his hand, but he did become, but he did according to his will and became great. So Daniel sees a ram with two horns. It also says one was higher than the other. Now we don't have to guess about the vision and what it speaks of, <clears throat> because down in verse 20 of Daniel 8, it tells us, The ram which thou sawest having two horns are the kings of Media and Persia, the Medes and the Persians. So Daniel is seeing a prophecy of the coming Mede-Persian Empire. You see there a map uh, on the screen and all that, uh, that light brown or tan, I guess you'd call it, maybe a little orange tint, uh, is the Persian Emperor, Empire under Cyrus the Great. Um, then you have that uh, Lydia up on, on the top left corner uh, of, of the map, uh, but you can see uh, just how vast the Persian media empire is or was as they cover most of the known world at that time. So the ram having two horns is the kingdom of media and Persia, a world empire. Daniel goes on, and as I was considering, behold, a he-goat came from the west on the face of the whole earth and touched not the ground, and the goat had a notable horn between his eyes. So now we have a he-goat coming with a notable horn between his eyes. Again, we are told what this is all about in verse 21. The rough goat is the king of Greece, and the great horn that is between his eyes is the first king. And so we know from history that Greece would destroy and take over the Mede-Persian Empire. And so here we have a prophecy of Greece coming, and the great horn between his eyes is the first king. It then goes on in verse 8, Therefore the he-goat waxed very great, and when he was strong, the great horn was broken, and for it came up four notable ones toward the four winds of heaven. So when the he-goat was at its uh, pinnacle of strength, uh, he was broken, and out of him came four notable ones to the four winds of heaven. Now, again, we don't have to speculate on what this means. Verse 22 of Daniel 8. Now that being broken, speaking of the uh, notable horn, which would be Alexander, uh, king of Greece. Whereas four stood up for it, four kingdoms shall stand up out of the nation, but not in his power. And so at the death of Alexander, the first king of the Grecian Empire, four nations would come out of that one empire, four kings. Cassandra ruled over Macedonia and Greece. Lysimachus ruled over Thrace, Bithynia, and most of Asia Minor. Seleucus ruled over Syria and land to the east, including Babylonia, or Babylon. And then finally, Ptolemy, who ruled over Egypt and Israel. And the important two for our study are the last two, the Seleucus dynasty and the Ptolemy dynasty. Daniel 8 goes on. Then I heard one saint speaking, and another saint said unto that certain saint which spoke, How long shall be the vision concerning the daily sacrifice and the transgression of desolation? 
to give both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden underfoot. And he said unto me, Unto two thousand and three hundred days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. So here we have the coming desecration of the temple in Jerusalem. How long shall that vision be? The daily sacrifice will be destroyed, uh, and, and the temple would be desolate, uh, and the sanctuary and the host would be trodden underfoot. Uh, how long will it be until the sanctuary then will be cleansed, which is ultimately, as we saw in lesson number one, which the Maccabeans did when they recaptured Jerusalem? Well, here's the answer. The 2300 days of verse 14 most likely speaks of the period from 171 BC. This is in the year of Onias, the legitimate high priest who was murdered and a false line of high priest was instituted until 164 BC. In this year, the temple was cleansed as a result of the Mac Mac Maccabean revolt. So that is the 2300 days, most likely. Then we come to the New Testament. And here we have the first mention in the Bible of Hanukkah. In John 10, 22. And it was at Jerusalem, the feast of the dedication, and it was winter. The feast of dedication is the same as the feast of Hanukkah. Hanukkah means dedication. Now, in this event, in John chapter 10, it was at this holiday, the holiday of Hanukkah, dedication, that Jesus was asked if he was the Messiah. Verse 22 reads this way, John 10. And it was at Jerusalem, the feast of the dedication. It was winter, we would expect it to be, that's when Hanukkah takes place in our November-December time period. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, How long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Messiah, thou be the Christ, Christ Messiah, same word. If thou be the Messiah, tell us plainly. At Hanukkah, Feast of Dedication, the Jews said, if you are the Messiah, Jesus, tell us plainly. Now, there's probably a reason for this. I'm sure there's a reason for this uh, question being asked, and we will uh, consider that later as we uh, continue on in this class. So what do we know about the celebration of Hanukkah at the time of Jesus? Nothing. Nothing is recorded. All we know is that Jesus went up to Jerusalem at the Feast of Dedication, only time it's mentioned, John chapter 10, and while there he was asked the question, are you the Messiah of Israel? But we don't know how they celebrated the Feast of Dedication. There's no information in the Bible at all. What can we speculate, then, about the celebration of Hanukkah? And I think we can speculate about uh, perhaps some of the things that they would have been doing in celebrating this festival. Number one, the telling of the story of the Maccabean deliverance and rededication of the temple was probable. Uh, that continues or takes place to this very day. And it's highly probable that they would retell the story of what took place in 168 BC in the events around that desecration of the temple and Antiochus Epiphanes and, and, and Judah and the Maccabeans coming in and throw, overthrowing the Syrian uh, rule and rededicating that temple. Two, the lighting of a menorah was likely. Very likely. Now, Jewish people refer to it as Hanukkah. Menorah, te technically, I guess you could say, is just a candelabra. And there are two menorahs 
in the Jewish world. There's the one in the temple that is a seven-branched candelabra. But then there's the one used for Hanukkah, the Hanukkah menorah, which is nine-branched. So it's very likely that they lit the candles of the Hanukkah during this eight-day festival, even at the time of Jesus. The next lesson, we're going to look at the origin of the servant candle, the Shamas candle, and the uniqueness of this candle in the celebration of Hanukkah and its likely biblical background. And this will help us on our journey to understand, is December 25th the birth date of Jesus? Until next time, Shalom.